Hello everyone, welcome back to another Deck Tech on the YouTube channel. You might be noticing a deck that looks very similar to the deck from our last video. So in that time, there was a ban restriction announcement. That's actually why this video is a little later than the last couple. Uh, because it was announced on Friday, that they were going to ban a card. And kind of as expected, Field of the Dead was the only card to go. And as such, Historic has kind of drastically changed. You know, we've talked about this deck before and how I mentioned it's kind of sweet. Maybe not the best thing going on. I legitimately think this shell of cards is probably a top deck in Historic at the moment. And so I'm going to talk about it a bit more today because one of the pieces of feedback I got from the last video was while entertaining, wanted a little bit more conversation about the deck. So I figured maybe gameplay videos and these kind of deck things shouldn't be meshed together. But hey, it was an experiment and it was worth trying. And it sounds like some of you all actually had a lot of fun playing the deck. So I figured it might be a little more helpful to kind of talk about the deck today. I'm going to rehash a small bit of what we talked about in the last video. So bear with me. But if this is your first time seeing it, hopefully it's helpful. So this is Red Black Lurus. Um, the point of this deck is really to utilize low cost spells with high synergy um, in order to overwhelm your opponent. So you're gonna see that with things like Dreadful Darkness combined with Thoughtseize, Young Pyromancer combined with cheap spells, Citrus Supplier to dig through our deck. And then once we're kind of digging for these spells and creatures to cast off Lurus, we can bring Croxa back. And that's kind of, the gist of the deck you know you see things like claim uh fame over here that let us buy back cards and get cash in the graveyard so the deck has a lot of really cool synergies and we'll talk about that in just a second here i want to talk about one of the biggest strengths of this deck and the reason i think this deck is a, a tier player before i go into the cards in case maybe you're a little skeptical right now because i know it looks like a pile uh <laughs> and to be fair i kind of kind of thought it was a pile when i first started playing um and it was just very fun but it, it's a lot better than that um, the, the thing that I think Historic has a real problem with right now is that there's not a lot of early interaction and removal, and this deck actually gets to play a lot of it. Um, Clan of the Firstborn is basically a removal spell in our deck. Between our Phyrexian Tower, our Sacrifice Outlets, our Reckless Rage, we can normally, you know, work to have a Clan of the Firstborn take that, or, you know, Claim just clearing the way to get a lethal strike is sometimes uh, good enough as a removal spell. It's one of the premium cards in Historic, honestly, when it comes to early game interaction, and we get to play four of it and use it very effectively. I think that's one of the big strengths of this deck. We also get to play four of the single strongest card in uh, Historic, and that's Thoughtseize. If there's any card that is no work for it to be good, it's Thoughtseize. And we get to play four of it, and thanks to Dreadhorde Arcanist, um, we can combine these two cards and get a lot of mileage out of them. Really, you know, sort of having five to six copies, uh, assuming, you know, we're going to find a Dreadhorde Arcanist and get to cast them. And get it to hit but it's very easy when your deck has thought season in order to clear away for a dreadful darkness you know i like to joke that this deck has a splinter twin combo of thought season and dreadful darkness and to cast your thought season again a lot of the decks in historic aren't really capable of beating that sort of draw and this deck has that draw available to it with a lot of other really powerful draws along those lines and we're going to talk about that today and so i think really the reason to play this deck is a it's a lot of fun and i think that goes a long way in a deck that's probably a tier one if not 1.5 ish you know deck and two it it gets the best removal in the early game and cheap and removal removal of that so you're able to double spell a lot with this deck and that sort of thing's really powerful and historic so while your cards might not be the pound for pound strongest cards we do have the single pound for pound of strong current thought seize and some hitters that can stay in there so let's kind of talk about it here reckless rage is a new addition from the deck if you saw the last video Reckless Rage is just an early spot removal spell that works well with our Claim the Firstborns. Um, it kills a lot of things in the deck, which is a piece of feedback I see from a lot of people. Uh, it would kill the Young Pyromancer, it would kill the Priest, and it would kill the Sister Supplier, and obviously Loris. Um, but really, you're trying to use it with like a Young Pyromancer token, with a Dreadhorde Arcanist, with a Crocs a Trigger on the stack, or maybe off a Claim. That's why we only have two of it in the deck, but there are some pretty big creatures that we need to answer in Historic right now, and Reckless Rage allows us to do that. Um, you can play a card like Shock in this spot or Spark Harvest. I think Shock uh, is pretty good if you're just looking for a card to one for one. It doesn't require a lot of setup. Spark Harvest, normally you'll sacrifice a creature along with it. Um, it does have a mode that allows you to cast it for four or more mana. And while our deck does have a lot of mana at times, since we have a problem of closing the door without Croxa, um, I still feel that Reckless Rage is the best for right now, just to answer the other decks, but I think Spark Harvest is totally reasonable, I think Shock is totally reasonable. One of the cool things about this deck is it's very modal and you can do a lot of different things. We're going to talk about some of those as we go through the video like we just did now. Uh, Claim the Firstborn, we already kind of talked about it, it's one of the premium cards in the deck. It combos very well with Reckless Rage and Village Rights, which is our next card. Village Rights, this allows us to move through our deck. You do a lot of hold priority in this deck, so if you're not used to an arena, you need to click control on your keyboard, and that way you can play your Croxa or something like that, and then Hold priority so before it's sacrificed, you can village ride it, or reckless rage it, or Phyrexian tower it, and those sort of things. 
That's a way to get ahead and really get more mileage out of your Kruxa. Not gonna talk much about Thoughtseize, it's great, it's really, really strong, and it's probably the last this deck to be a deck. Stitcher Supplier, um, this is a card that I, I've, people give me mixed reviews on, it's interesting, a lot of people wanna cut this card for something that's stronger, but normally the card they suggest works really well with Stitcher Supplier, which is Archfiend's Vessel, so I've seen some decks that are for Stitcher for Archfiend Vessel. You'll notice we don't have Archfiend's Vessel, I have found it to be a little lacking and really relies on Luris to be a card that's good. Stitcher Supplier really, is only set up for the deck, right? Like, uh, it, it helps set up a Crocs to return, it helps set up um, a Dredge Arcanist attack, it helps set up a Luris to buy back something. It's, you know, kind of cheap, so it's easy to use with our cards like Village Rights and Reckless Rage. But it really, um, if it hits well, or your cards are kind of going, it reads a lot more like Divination or Ancestral Recall, uh, allowing you to do a lot of different things. You know, when you draw a bunch of cards, and when you put a bunch of cards in your graveyard and you bring back an early Croxa, right? That's uh, basically Ancestral. It's, it's just so much card advantage. You're moving through so many cards, it's so powerful. You know, one of the strongest things this deck can do is turn one Stitchers, turn two Croxa, turn three Phyrexian Towers, sack your Stitcher, bring back your Croxa. Um, and that play is something that happens with this deck, a uh, reasonable issue not all the time, so I think Citrus Supplier earns its spot in the deck, but uh, Archwing's Vessel has just been a little lacking and a little too reliant on Claim or, sorry, Claim Fame, <laughs> and the two Claims in the deck that both one mana make it very awkward, uh, and Luris for my taste, but totally get where people are coming from having that card. When you do bring it back early, a Flying 5-5 five five is really big. Crocs is our late game engine. It's a card that really allows us to close the door against some of our worst matchups and rip our bad matchups hands apart. You gotta love Crocs. So Young Pyromancer, one of the coolest cards in uh, Historic and a card I know a lot of people really love. Weirdly, kind of just there for value and kind of part of a B plane of amassing a big enough board and allowing cards like Village Rights and Reckless Rage not to put us too far behind. But a pivotal part of the deck and something you're gonna be pretty happy to have. Dreadheart Arcanist, one of my favorite cards from War of the Spark very strong and as we mentioned already we have a lot of really cheap one mana interaction and Dredge of Darkness works really well with those cards. Priest of Forgotten Gods is a little bit of a weird one in our deck. Our deck needs to kind of churn and move through things and Young Pyromancer combos really well with this card, Croxa combos really well in the front half with this card so Priest is in here as a way to kind of answer board states, churn through the deck and allow us to keep double spelling. Um, that's why you only going to see three Priests and pass builds we had some in the sideboard but with the changing meta and auras uh, kind of going down, you're not gonna really want priests. If you see auras come up, I suggest putting a priest in the board and an innocent blood. Then we have a claim fane. This is one of the cooler cards added from Amiket into the deck. Allowing you to return a two CMC creature from your graveyard to the battlefield is really strong. This is why you kind of see people play Archfiend's Vessel as you know that and a sack it to like a Frexian Tower and you claim fame it. Um, you know, then you like fame to haste the, the demon. It's very strong. Uh, this card, this is kind of a value piece that allows us to bring back the pieces we want. Sometimes you just fame back your Crocs to trip your opponent's hand apart in the early game. That's very strong. And sometimes you buy your Crocs back via its escape cost and then you just fame it. And you know, you kind of smack them for 11. It's a great way to close the door against the more controlling decks in the later portions of the game. Fame also does this weird thing where it allows you to cast spells that are a little bit more expensive with your Dreadhorde Arcanist, since Dreadhorde Arcanist's cast ability is tied to its power. It actually allows you to cast the next card, which I think was a pretty smart addition that was found online, and so happy to see it here. It's Bedevil. It lets you destroy uh, a target artifact creature or planeswalker. The deck actually has a problem post board against Grafdaker's Cage. Uh, that's why we have Goblin Crater Maker, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, but this deck. Uh, really needed some more removal, a little bit heavy hitter card, and having this card's very nice. And so now we have something that we can, you know, kill off a problematic creature, problematic planeswalker, you know, maybe they're playing some weird artifact deck. Just kind of a nice little catch all the ish card. And then combined with fame here, we're able to, you know, Dreadhorde Arcanist it back, which honestly can come up more than you would think. You, you find a lot of ways to make your one mana spells come up, and having that option of fame in order to, like, maybe bedevil something, fame your Dreadhorde Arcanist, bedevil another thing, can be quite powerful. Uh, at this point in the video, you're going to start seeing the sideboard pop up. So, along with the sideboard guide, start with that. And so we're going to talk a bit about that right now. Duress um, is a card that we have in the sideboard for the combo matchups. Uh, Duress is a card that we also bring in for the control matchups. So there's some decks like New Perspectives, etc. 
and historic and the control decks are predominantly blue white or sultai um, for the sultai ones not as much but for the blue white decks we really want to be able to rip apart their threats since normally they'll play like a bane slayer or a dream trawler or something along those kind of lines but we leave priest in these matchups anyways to answer those cards or duress is like kind of an all-star here reckless rage is a one of this is kind of a nod to early aggressive decks um, we have two myers graphs as well to kind of go in this vein myers grasp allows us um, a repeatable uh, uh, kill spell with our Lurus. I originally had dead weight, but I was realizing Gruul and that sort of thing was popping up a lot more, um, and including the mirror where you want to kill Dreadhorde Arcanist a bunch. And so I put two Meyer Grasp as a spell that we can buy back off our Lurus. So maybe not as efficient as some of our other spells, but the ability to recur with Lurus really cannot be undersold. Um, so that's sort of those two cards in our sideboard. Then we have Goblin Crater Maker. I want to touch on it right now along with the Myers Grass because Goblin Crater Maker really replaced a Braid, which is a much stronger spell, kind of like how one of our kill spells like Innocent Blood or something is probably a lot stronger than Myers Grasp. But being rebuyable off Luris and our claims as well, I think is really real. Goblin Crater Maker being able to kill Graph Taker's Cage, I think is a huge portion. Um, to why it is played in our sideboard. So it allows us to control the board early, kind of trade off even against the, uh, the aggressive decks that might bring in a Graph Digger's Cage against us. And then it kills the cage, and then against the controlling decks that play Graph Digger's Cage, instead of having a, you know, a Shatter in our hand, we have a 2-2 on the board, which can actually pressure them. And so while maybe a bit more susceptible to their spells, we'll answer the Graph Digger Cage for us, and we can buy it back with Lurus in the later game. I've had a lot of games where I just kind of played a Crater Maker, popped their Graph Digger's Cage, game went on a little bit, played Lurus, bought back a Crater Maker, and I was like, okay, I, I got a body here. And if they play, you know, another cage, which a lot of decks in Historic play two or three cages in the sideboard um, for things like these sort of graveyard decks, um, the... I'm forgetting their name, Goblins, right now is a way to stop them for Collective Company, Bola, Citadel decks. Graph Digger's Cage is just really good right now, and so we need to have answers to it. And that's why you see the three Crater Maker, the Bedevil's Main, and the Bedevil on the board. Bedevil on the board is also just kind of a nice catch-all against uh, hard-to-answer decks. Decks with maybe a lot of Planeswalkers, decks that are going to bring in a lot of sort of things and have a diverse suite of uh, threats that maybe are kind of more linear but efficient answers in the main deck won't hit the devil is a nice card to kind of slot in there then we have argul's blood fast this is a card for the grindier matchups you want to have a card that can really allow you to go long and argul's does that against decks that aren't pressuring your life total being able to sit there and draw cards while you have minimal pressure on the board is a realistic point of victory and then in the late game argul's plus croxa is actually kind of real being able to sacrifice stuff off the uh temple of harass coast which is the flipped argul's uh, in order to gain life is kind of relevant and i've had a lot of games where I just kind of grind my opponent, draw a bunch of cards, minimal pressure, kind of evenish, and then I like Luris Croxa sack to gain some life. And I just do that over and over and over again. It's it's been tempting to actually add a second Argul's to kind of get a a the Argul's in your hand more consistently, but B to have that sort of wombo combo going. I've avoided temptation for now, but I think if control takes up like it has been um, from what I'm seeing online, then maybe you want to consider a second Argul's Bloodfast. And one of the cool things about this deck is you can do that sort of thing. Finally, we have Soul Guide Lantern. A little bit more of a contention spot here for a lot of people. Cling to Dust is the kind of de facto card in this sort of deck, and in my experience, Cling to Dust, while a very strong and powerful card, it wasn't quite doing what I wanted it to in the format. And Cling to Dust was just a little too slow, and while it was nice to be able to move through our deck a little bit and not be caught up, Soul Guide Lantern still allows us to do that with its draw card mode, and it's reviable off Lura, so while not as good at like popping a whole graveyard, like you just kind of won't do that a whole lot with Soul Guide Lantern, uh, you can still use it as a form of mini card advantage like you would with Cling to Dust, and being reviable off Lurus is nice, and a lot of times in the opposing matchups, you only want to hit a couple cards anyway, so it's not a whole lot of decks where you want to pop the whole graveyard, and the decks where you do want to pop the whole graveyard, you're probably fine to do that and just lose out on the value that your deck would get from the graveyard. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I tried to make it a little bit more condensed and concise than the green-white deck tech. Let me know what you think below, and until next time...